The Minoans, one of the earliest known advanced civilizations in Europe, flourished on the island of Crete and nearby islands from around 30 to 14 centuries before the Common Era. Known for their maritime prowess, they established a society characterized by trade, artistry, and complex social organization. The Minoans were adept seafarers, establishing trade networks across the Mediterranean, and this contact brought cultural and material influences that they incorporated into their own society. Life of Minoan Crete was centered on large palace complexes, with the most famous being the Palace of Knossos. These palaces were not only royal residences, but also served as economic, administrative, and religious centers. The Minoans enjoyed a lifestyle rich in art, as evidenced by their colorful frescoes depicting scenes of nature, religious ceremonies, and athletic events like bull leaping. The Minoan language, known primarily from two scripts called Linear A and Cretan hieroglyphs, remains undeciphered and so its relationship to known language families is still speculative. Scholars hypothesize that Minoan language belongs to a pre-Indo-European language group, possibly related to the languages of Neolithic Anatolia. Genetic studies indicate that the Minoans had close ties to Neolithic populations of Anatolia, suggesting that they were descended from early farming communities that spread across the Mediterranean. Culturally, the Minoans are particularly known for their distinctive pottery, which includes elaborate designs and vibrant colors, and their large storage jars or pitoi, used for storing grain, oil, and wine. Architecturally, Minoan buildings often featured multi-story structures with sophisticated layouts, drainage systems, and open-air courtyards. Their architectural designs reveal advanced construction techniques and an affinity for spatial harmony, marking the Minoans as one of the most architecturally innovating societies of their time. For this video, I gathered six Minoan DNA samples from 28 to 17 centuries before the Common Era and ran them for my trade predictor tool for DNA analysis. Links to purchase the six DNA files in 23andMe format will be in the description of the video, as well as the link to purchase my trade predictor executable. Three of the six samples were male, and two of those three samples carried Y lineage J2A. One sample carried Y lineage G2A. The most common phenotype among the samples was Mediterranean, and three out of six samples scored this phenotype. One sample scored stranded, and one sample scored an alpinate phenotype. One sample scored an arminoid phenotype. Here is the morph of the average phenotype of the group. The most common eye color among the samples was brown, with five samples scoring this eye color, and one sample scored dark brown as its predicted eye color. Three samples scored dark brown, and three samples scored black as their predicted hair color. Five samples scored olive, and one sample scored light brown as its predicted skin color. Three samples scored straight, and three samples scored wavy as their predicted hair texture. Five of the samples were predicted to have a Greek nose shape, and one sample was predicted to have a snub nose shape. Five of the six samples had high odds of male pattern boldness, and one sample had an average predisposition to male pattern boldness. Three samples were predisposed to be shorter, and three samples were predisposed to taller height. Four of the six samples carried risk variants for hemoglobin E disease, and two samples had low risk for migraine. Almost all samples had low risk for gout. Almost all samples had average risk of eczema. Two samples had very high, two samples had very low risk of age-related macular degeneration. One sample had low, and one sample had high odds of Tourette's. The samples had a high overall predisposition to epilepsy, average predisposition to myopia, and high predisposition to Alzheimer's disease. One sample had low odds of corneal astigmatism, two samples had high odds, and one sample had low odds of primary biliary cirrhosis. One sample had low odds of cardiovascular issues, and one sample had very high odds of cardiovascular issues. Two samples had low odds of atrial fibrillation. Regarding the Wodior versus Wodier trait, five samples were predicted to have an intermediate phenotype, and one sample was a Wodior, meaning lower dopamine levels and highest stress resiliency. Regarding D2 receptor availability, two samples were predicted to have fewer D2 receptor sites, and one sample was predicted to have more D2 receptor sites, leading to higher odds of bipolar 1 and schizophrenia. 
Speaking of bipolar 1, two samples had very low odds of bipolar 1 and one sample had high odds of bipolar 1. Two samples had low odds and one sample had high odds of depression. Two samples had low odds of ADHD. Five out of six samples were predisposed to intermediate odds of autism and one sample was predisposed to higher odds of autism and no sample was predicted to be lactase persistent. Three samples were predicted to have a lower level of empathy based on OXTR genotypes and two samples were predicted to have a higher level of empathy. The samples were pretty athletic, with four samples being homozygous for the sprinter R allele and ACT and 3's R577X and only one sample being the heterozygous. The samples were predisposed to lower odds of epithelial cancer, with all six samples scoring lower odds of epithelial cancers. Speaking of cancers, the samples had an average predisposition to blood cancers such as leukemia and polycythemia vera. The samples had an average predisposition to breast cancer, high predisposition to glioma, which is brain cancer, high predisposition to thyroid cancer, and very high predisposition to testicular cancer on the basis of KETOG genotype. Five out of six samples had average odds of allergies, and one sample had higher odds of allergies. All six samples had lower odds of autoimmune disease on the basis of HLA genotypes, although two samples did have high odds of autoimmune conditions, namely rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. No samples carried HLA DRB1 risk variants for multiple sclerosis, though. Speaking of type 2 diabetes, no samples had a high predisposition to it, and four samples had lower odds for this condition. Five of the six samples also scored intermediate odds of obesity, and one sample scored lower odds of obesity. Five out of six samples had shorter than average telomere lengths, which leads to shorter biological lifespan, and one sample possibly had hemochromatosis on the basis of his predicted iron levels. Five of the six samples had lower odds of syncope, and one sample had high odds of syncope. Two samples had very low predicted vitamin D levels, and one sample had significantly higher than average predicted vitamin D level. Most samples were predicted to have elevated LDL cholesterol, which is bad for cardiovascular health, and seems to be a common prediction pattern for Europeans. Regarding blood type, four of the six samples were predicted to have blood type A, and two samples were predicted to have blood type O. No sample scored any blood types besides A and O. Thank you for watching my video until the end. Make sure you leave a like and share if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.